Good morning. It is Saturday morning. And yes, I am fully glammed up because pourquoi pas, at least this is going to distract and you guys are not going to focus on the tired eyes because I slept two hours last night with my baby. That being said, I am Dr. Shireen Idris. I am a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City, back in the city today. And welcome to my YouTube channel where every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. I put out a new video where we discuss a topic du jour. And this Saturday, I am going to hit on something that I mentioned in passing in one of my previous videos that garnered a lot of comments, which is the myth of the retinol purge. Let's go. So before I go on, make sure to like, subscribe below, and don't forget to leave a comment or question. I promise you guys that I genuinely try to read through these comments and questions as the video comes up. Um, sometimes I'm a little bit better than others. Other times I completely fall to the wayside. It just depends on my kids' emotional status for the Saturday morning and depending on how much I can actually type um, and respond to comments. Um, that being said, I did see your comments about me saying that the purge of retinols is not necessarily true and I wanted to address it because I think this is one myth that has been perpetuated long enough and needs to get squashed. So let's get started, shall so, we? You're super psyched. You went to Sephora, Ulta, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, anywhere, and you went and decided to buy the Fountain of Youth, also known as a retinoid. Because after hearing my lectures and just basically from the beauty industry in general, you hear that retinols are super necessary in order to have skin of a baby fetus. Um, and so you go and you buy the product, only to find out after a week of using it every single night, or even morning and night, that your face is a minefield of zits, bumps, redness, and you're this peeling. Um, and so you're like, WTF? I didn't sign up for this shit. I thought I was gonna have baby looking skin and here I am looking like a prepubescent teenager and yet I'm almost 40 or 30 or 50 or whatever. And you have been told time and time again that this is to be expected. It's the purge of the retinol. And so you gotta power through this purge in order to achieve beautiful skin. So the truth is, are you really experiencing a purge or is your skin just having a really bad reaction to the product and what might be good for someone else is just not working for you? And so I wanna to touch on what exactly is a purge? Because I've seen countless number of articles all through the webospheres and in actual print magazines, if you still read print magazines, that has led you to believe that it is the toxins of your body coming up to the surface, wanting to be released from your body to come out. But skincare is not an exorcism. <laughs> Retinols are not gonna be the priests that get the toxins out of your body or your system. And we have kidneys and we have a liver in our bodies, inside, that releases our body of the toxins that build up throughout the day, months, years, whatever. So I, I want to first and foremost clear the air of these imaginary toxins, you know, that have been created within the beauty world, that have been perpetuated among publications, among influencers, among bloggers, among brand owners, among brands, because they don't exist. Our skin is not getting rid of the talk. We're, we're not dispelling toxins through our skin. We're actually peeing and shitting them out. <laughs> okay, that's how we get rid of the toxins. Sorry to be crass on this Saturday morning, but that is the truth and that is the hard truth. No matter how beautiful you are or what a little flower you are, Everybody takes a dump and everybody takes a piss and that is how our bodies self-regulate to get rid of our toxins, not through the holy grail ingredient called a retinoid. So what exactly then is the quote unquote right definition of a skin purge? A skin purge, my dearly beloved little nerds, is an adjustment period. It is a temporary moment in time in which after starting either a retinoid or even a hydroxy acid so a chemical exfoliant our skin has to adjust to the product and rarely it can get a little bit worse before it gets better 
And this brief moment in time, on average, lasts around three-ish weeks. Not months, not years. And what determines a purge is the concentration of either the retinoid or the hydroxy acid, plus the actual pH of the formulation and how that product is actually made. And how then can I explain why our skin gets a little bit worse? Pimples, blackheads, whiteheads, inflammatory lesions are like icebergs. What you see on the surface is one part of the story with the real story happening underneath the surface of the skin. And what starts off as what appears to be a clogged pore has actually been happening over time underneath the surface of the skin. And by the time this quote unquote microcomedone comes up to the surface of the skin, usually on average for a normal person who's not using a retinoid or a hydroxy acid, that process can take around four to eight weeks because in our skin, normal anatomy, we have our epidermis right here. <laughs> then we have our dermis below it, followed by the sub -Q beneath that. Within our epidermis, there are various layers of skin cells that need on average 28 days to go from the bottom up and shed and come off, all right? So when you start using a product like a retinoid or a hydroxy acid, you're speeding up cell turnover, speeding up that process from the lowest layer of the epidermis to the highest layer of the epidermis, bringing that process up, shedding skin cells a little bit faster. You're not thinning out your skin though, because retinoids particularly, as well as hydroxy acids like glycolic, have been proven to build collagen beneath, within the dermis and the lower layers of the skin. So that is technically a purge. Now, most people and most patients who come to my practice are actually experiencing skin reactions in which their skin is either super sensitive it does not mean that they cannot tolerate it. Um, it just means that they have to find the right balance between efficacy and irritation in order to tolerate a product, or they simply cannot tolerate the product at all and the product is just not sitting well with their skin. And how do you differentiate then a purge from a reaction? Reactions are actually, believe it or not, much more common than you think. Um, skin tends to be irritated, red, inflamed, and it doesn't really get better over time. So you can keep on using that retinol, but if you've been using that retinol for months on end and you're still inflamed and red and flaking and irritated, you're probably having a skin reaction. Additionally, with a reaction, you tend to break out in areas where you don't classically break out. So for instance, with a purge, if I'm somebody who tends to get acne in my T-zone or here, my inverted T-zone, then when I'm using a retinoid for the first three weeks, I might have a little bit more of little comedones coming to a head before they come out. However, with a reaction, if I'm using a retinoid all over, what I will notice over a couple of weeks is that I might be breaking out here, 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 like all over. And they're not just small little comedones, but they're more inflammatory as well. So that is sort of the first way you can tell the difference. The second way is also time. Like I said, a purge lasts on average three weeks. A reaction can go on way well over six weeks, just depending on how long you're actually using the product and introducing those irritants onto your skin. So how do you know if you are actually experiencing a purge or a reaction slash breakout? Number one, look at the active ingredients of your products. If it's something just with, for instance, I don't know, vitamin C, vitamin C does not usually cause a purge. Vitamin C can be very irritating and therefore can cause a reaction or a breakout, okay? Like l ascorbic acid. So the things you wanna look at that increase cell turnover are retinoids, retinols, hydroxy acids like AHAs and BHAs, salicylic acid, lactic acid, glycolic acid. Number two, and it's not so simple, it's the actual formulation of the product. And that's why when it comes to skincare, it is a matter of trial and error. What works for me may not necessarily work for you and that is okay. And you have to get to know your skin. 
learn your skin and see what your skin responds to, see what your skin can actually tolerate because what's formulated and works well for one person can be a disaster on someone else. It doesn't mean that the product is shit, it just means it's shit for you. <laughs> and so you gotta differentiate that. Number three, a breakout that occurs after introducing a new product is not necessarily a sign of a purge. It could just be a product that is triggering a breakout and an irritating inflammatory reaction. I think that is key. And so in conclusion, not every breakout is a purge. I think the word purge has been way overused, way abused, and needs to be <laughs> um, redefined. Um, and I think we have to really understand that not all retinols or retinoids are actually going to cause a purge. So how do you then minimize a purge? If you're that nervous, do not start with a prescription strength. Start with an over-the-counter retinol and usually opt for the lightest one in concentration. That's number one. Number two, don't start using that one every single night like you are some sort of like Tarzan who's able to tolerate the maximum effect right away. Start with a low concentration and incorporate it slowly into your routine, meaning two times a week at night. Do that for several weeks until you know you got it, then add a night. And do that for several weeks until you know you got it, then add a night, and so forth and so on. Number three, if you're very, very nervous, just minimize the number of actives that you're using and try to tailor your skincare so that you tell yourself over the next two months, I'm going to make sure that my skin can tolerate retinols and this is the only active I'm gonna be using over the next two months. Do not worry, your face is not gonna melt off. You will not disintegrate. You will not be looking like an old crypt keeper by the end of the two months. Your skin will thank you in the long run, okay? Slow and steady wins the race. And finally, if once you've done all of this and you still think that you're just uber sensitive, buffer the retinol with a moisturizer. Put the moisture on first, then use the retinol on top of it. Allow the moisturizer to sort of decrease, in, in fact, the efficacy of the retinol. So it's not as aggressive on your skin and your skin can actually tolerate it. And by doing that, you'll be reaping the benefits slower, but slowly over time, and that is key. Consistency, consistency, consistency over intensity. You don't go and do 500 sit-ups expecting a six-pack and then die the next day. You do like two sit-ups <laughs> every single day, and those two sit-ups over time might give you a two-pack, but I'd rather have that than die the next day. And that is how you introduce retinoids into your skincare routine. So in conclusion, it is a myth that the exacerbation of acne is necessary for the retinol to start working. That is a complete myth. There's no evidence that worsening of acne is needed and or is to be anticipated before actually seeing visible clinical signs of improvement from your retinoid. I hope this video has shed some light between the differences between a purge and a just inflammatory reaction. Unfortunately, a lot of beauty brands are leading people to believe that it is necessary to experience a purge before reaping the benefits of the products. I vote no. I vote gentler and better skincare products for your skin. It doesn't mean that that product is just not good. It just means it's not good for your skin. And so it's a matter of trial and error. Um, and with that, I hope you guys learned a thing or two today. Um, I have a list of my favorite retinols over the counter that I will link below if you guys are ever interested in trying them out. And please leave any questions below, leave any comments below, or any suggestions for future videos as I go through those to the best of my finger typing abilities. I wish you all a beautiful Saturday morning and I will catch you guys next week.